Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 7 o'clock main news. In tonight's headlines, His Highness the Emir receives a cable of congratulations from His Excellency the President of Ukraine. Yemen's Houthi rebels have signed a final part of a peace deal with the government days after taking control of much of the capital Sana'a. Japan's second highest volcano, Mount Ontaki, erupts, leaving hundreds of people trapped on the mountain and more than 30 feared dead. And thousands gather in Hong Kong after police clash with protesters seeking democracy in the city. His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah, received at Safe Palace today His Highness the Crown Prince, Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah. His Highness also received His Excellency the National Assembly Speaker Marzouk Ali Al Ghanim. His Highness the Emir then received the Acting Prime Minister, Minister of Interior, Acting Minister of Awqaf and Islamic Affairs, and Acting Minister of Defence, Sheikh Mohammed Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah received at Sif Palace today the Minister of Finance and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Public Authority for Investment, Anas Khalid Al Saleh, the Authority Managing Director, Badr Mohammed Al Saad, and Board Members Mustafa Jassim Al Shimali, Hilal Al Shari Al Mtiri, and Abdullah Al Hamidi. The meeting was attended by the Deputy Minister of Amir Diwan Affairs, Sheikh Ali Jarrah Al Subah. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah received at Safe Palace today the Minister of State for Cabinet Affairs, Acting Minister of, uh, of Justice, and Acting Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Mohammed Abdullah Al Barak Al Subah, and the Head of the Public Authority for the Combat of Corruption, Council Abdurrahman Nimish Al Nimish. They briefed His Highness the Emir on the Authority's plans and mechanisms that will commence at the beginning of next year. His Highness the Emir Sheikh Subah Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah received a cable of congratulations from His Excellency President Petro Poroshenko of the Republic of Ukraine, in which he congratulated His Highness for Kuwait being named by the United Nations as a humanitarian action center and His Highness as a humanitarian leader. He said this act by the United Nations came in recognition and appreciation of the great efforts being made by His Highness and the State of Kuwait on the global humanitarian level and praised the contributions of His Highness to humanitarian work, which enhances Kuwait's position at the international scene. His Highness the Emir sent a reply cable thanking the President of Ukraine for his congratulations and kind feelings, which he expressed in his cable on the occasion of Kuwait being named by the United Nations as a humanitarian action center and His Highness as a humanitarian leader. His Highness said in his reply cable that the message of congratulations reflects the existing good relations between the two countries and their peoples. His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Subah received at Sif Palace today His, Ex his Excellency the National Assembly Speaker Marzouk Ali Al Ghanim. His Highness also received the Acting Prime Minister, Minister of Interior, Acting Minister of Awqaf and Islamic Affairs, and Acting Minister of Defence, Sheikh Mohammed Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah. His Highness then received His Excellency the Minister of Information and Minister of State for Youth Affairs, Sheikh Salman Sabah Al Salim Al Hamoud Al Sabah.
His Highness the Crown Prince later received the Minister of State for Cabinet Affairs, Acting Minister of Justice and Acting Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Mohammed Abdul Mubarak al subah His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Subah received at Seif Palace today the Minister of Finance Anas Khalid Al Saleh, the Managing Director of the Public Authority for Investment Badr Mohammed Al Saad, and Board Members Mustafa Jassim Al Shimali, Hilal Al Shari Al Mtiri, and Abdullah Al Hamidi. The first deputy premier and minister of foreign affairs, Sheikh Subah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah, met in New York on the sidelines of the current UN General Assembly session with the Prime Minister of Grenada, Keith Michael, and his and discussed with him ways of boosting cooperation between the two countries in different fields. Sheikh Subah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah also met in New York with the Foreign Minister of the Republic of Nicaragua, Samuel Santos Lopez, in which they discussed fostering bilateral relations in different domains. The First Deputy Premier and Foreign Minister also met with the Foreign Minister of the Republic of Sri Lanka, J. L. Perez, and discussed with him the existing relations between the two countries. Sheikh Subah Al Khalid also met with the Foreign Minister of Cyprus, Yanis Kasolidis. Talks between the two sides focused on bilateral cooperation in different fields. The first Deputy Premier and Foreign Minister also met with the head of the Syrian National Alliance, Hadi Al Bahra, and accompanying delegation. Talks in the meeting focused on the latest developments of the Syrian crisis. The first Deputy Premier and Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Foreign Minister of the Comoros Islands, uh, Ikilio Duanin, and discussed with him ways of boosting bilateral relations. Finally, Sheikh Subah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Subah met with the Foreign Minister of South Sudan, Brunaba Mariel Benjamin, and discussed with him the existing relations between the two countries. Turkish military personnel stood guard near the Turkey-Syria border today as Syrian refugees continued to flee from the IS group. The assault by IS militants on the Syrian Kurdish town of Kobani has sent more than 100,000 refugees streaming across the border into Turkey in recent days. The US Central Command said that airstrikes destroyed an IS building and two armed vehicles near the border town of Kobani, which the insurgents have been besieging for the past 10 days. Meanwhile, residents of a Turkish border town said that the U.S.-led coalition warplanes have struck an oil refinery controlled by IS militants inside Syria. The U.S.-led coalition has been targeting oil installations controlled by the militants, aiming to cripple their revenue sources estimated at about $3 million U.S. million a day. The final part of a peace deal between the government has, was signed by Houthi rebels after days of taking control of most of the capital. The deal signed is an extension of a UN-brokered agreement signed earlier on Monday and is expected to put an end to weeks of ongoing violence. By signing the five-point appendix, all parties pledged to stop acts of violence in the country. The deal also seeks to bring an immediate halt of fighting in Al Jauf and Marib regions, where all military groups coming from outside the two governorates are ordered to withdraw from. A loud explosion today rocked the Afghan capital city of Kabul on the eve of the inauguration of the country's new president. The incident, which left one person injured, uh, occurred when a magnetic bomb planted on an army vehicle went off. More details with Nadia Ali. Afghanistan's foreign minister addressed diplomats at the United Nations, saying his country had achieved a significant milestone with the recent resolution of Afghanistan's presidential election. A compromise brokered by the United States has led to Ashraf Ghani becoming Afghanistan's president, while his opponent, Abdullah Abdullah, will have the role of chief executive officer. Zirar Ahmed Usmani said, the country's on the cusp of a new decade 
With Afghan security forces due to take over the country's security responsibilities from the international coalition forces by the end of the year, Osmani did deliver a warning to Pakistan during his address, however. He said the government of Afghanistan would like to express serious concerns over the rocket attacks by Pakistani forces into Afghanistan soil and that the continuation of such attacks is unacceptable for Afghanistan. The country's new president is expected to sign a security agreement, perhaps as early as next week, that allows some 10,000 U.S. troops to remain in Afghanistan after all combat troops are withdrawn by the end of the year. The protracted dispute over the results of the June presidential runoff with allegations of widespread fraud had delayed the signing of the deal. Meanwhile, a bomb hit a military vehicle in the diplomatic quarter of the Afghan capital today, a day before the inauguration of a new president. Police said one person was wounded and no one killed by the magnetic bomb, which was attached to a military truck in Zanbag Square near the vast presidential palace compound and several embassies. Security is tight in Kabul ahead of tomorrow's inauguration of the new president, who will replace longtime leader Hamid Karzai just before most foreign troops withdraw from the violence-wracked country. International leaders and dignitaries have been invited to the ceremony as the Taliban and allied insurgents seek to launch attacks to scare visitors away and create a mood of insecurity. The inauguration tomorrow will also see presidential candidate Abdullah, named chief executive, opposed similar to prime minister. Ghani and Abdullah agreed to share power in a unity government last week after months of bitter deadlock over the presidential vote in which each accused the other of vote rigging. Rescue workers have found 31 feared dead near the peak of an erupting volcano in central Japan. Police said they were found in a state of cardiopulmonary arrest, but declined to confirm their deaths pending a formal examination as per Japanese custom. The volcano, about 200 kilometers west of Tokyo, erupted yesterday without warning, spewing cash, ash and rocks. The mountain is a popular climbing destination. At least 250 people were trapped on the slopes. However, most made their way down. Hong Kong police used tear gas to disperse pro-democracy protesters outside the main government building after a week of escalating tensions. The protesters reject Beijing's recent decision to restrict voting reforms for the first ever election to choose Hong Kong's leader promised for 2017. Hong Kong chief executive Tsai Lung said that the demonstration was illegal and elections would go ahead as planned. Lung also added that consultations would continue and a resolute action would be taken against the illegal demonstrations. The public affairs section of the U.S. Embassy held a press conference today announcing the first ever Kuwait te tech meetup under Secretary of the Ministry of Youth Affairs, Sheikh Zain Azin al Subah, and CEO of Entrepreneurial Hub Ali New York. Jason Saltzman spoke about how the New York based organization is working in collaboration with the Ministry of Youth Affairs to inspire Kuwait's young entrepreneurs. Our reporter, Bilibia Saleh, brings us this report. Through the collaboration of the Ministry of State for Youth Affairs and the Ali NYC, Kuwait's first ever tech meetup kicks off this week in hopes to guide and inspire local entrepreneurs. It's untapped territory and I believe that Kuwaitis by nature are pioneers, so they tend to gravitate towards new um, ideas. Um, the idea today is to make sure that once they gravitate towards this new idea, that there is a framework, that there is an infrastructure that they can help build, that there are um, legislative measures that can assist in making sure that they get all, um, all they need. Uh, the, the ministry's role today is to be a facilitator in this uh, meetup. Uh, the ministry's role in general uh, is to make sure that youth um, are represented uh, along all different levels and uh, when it comes to all different types of um, businesses as well we make sure that we define uh, our role as representing the youth inside the government rather than representing the government inside the youth community. At Ali NYC we build community um, and as far as I can take that 
from here to the end of the planet, I'm going to do it. So when the State Department contacted me, I jumped at the chance to come to this part of the region to help inspire entrepreneurs grow businesses. So we have plans with the State Department to expand the program to have an entrepreneur in the States come here once a month to meet with the young startups. Also, we're thinking about ideas and how we can collaborate with one another to help build a community of startups around the Kuwait Tech Meetup. Once a month, startups and aspiring founders from Kuwait will come together to demonstrate what they're working on, what they've learned, as well as hear brief talks by different Kuwait startup community leaders. KWTM organizers hope to create a place not only where its participants can learn together, but also create an atmosphere where relationships and connections are made. I think it's really great because this particular program has so much potential to have a long, ongoing impact. Uh, Jason bringing the meetup format means that those people who go to this first tech meetup will have the opportunity to continue to interact with other entrepreneurs in Kuwait, but also entrepreneurs in the United States and perhaps other countries as well on an ongoing basis now that they've got the idea and they've seen it in action. Uh, it's also exciting because it's the kickoff of what we expect to be a series of workshops and trainings with various Americans. Uh, and I hope it will also perhaps lead to more exchanges. One of the great things about Kuwait is that many people here do have the opportunity to travel to the U.S., already travel to the U.S. We're hoping that this will lead to more fruitful meetings and uh, collaboration and other opportunities for them. I'm learning the challenges as I'm here. And I think that many, there's a lot of fears be, uh, for failing. I think that people are afraid to do things because they're afraid to fail. Um, and my, my advice to that, um, as I see things rolling out and as I like to add value in the experience of meeting me and learning from the culture, is to understand that it's not about, you're not failing if you, if, if you, you have to accept failure. You have to understand that failure, it's, it, when you start a business, it's like a science experiment. And just because you don't get the formula right right away, that doesn't mean you're not going to get the end goal. So you need to understand failure is just a way of not, not, not being right in that moment, but get past that to your goal of succeeding. As technology and entrepreneurship keep growing in Kuwait, Kuwait Tech Meetup hopes the monthly gatherings will be good soil for all the potential creative and ambitious minds to work together seasoned and new. The first meeting will be held this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. at Gust University. From the National Library, I'm Badriel Saleh, reporting for The English News. The Kuwait Stock Exchange ended today's trading on a mixed board as the weighted index recorded 495.7 points, losing 1.37 points. The price index reached 7,661.05 points, gaining 5.48 points, and the KSX 15 reached 1,206.15, losing 6.49 points. The number of trades was 6,309, with a value of 27 million Kuwaiti dinars and a volume of 308 million shares changing hands. The French Embassy in Kuwait held a press conference in the presence of Mr. Jack Lang, President of the Arab World Institute Paris and former Cultural Prime Minister of France at the Radisson Blue Hotel. The objective of Mr. Lang's visit is to maintain dialogue with key authorities in the arts and cultural arena. Our reporter Rinwe Jabouri was there and has the following report. The Arab World Institute was born out of the wheel to develop awareness of Arab humanism, including arts, culture and knowledge nationwide. France enjoys deep relations with the countries of the Arab world and hosts millions of citizens originating from Arab and Muslim countries. Kuwait is a country which is loved and appreciated. Uh, it's uh, uh, Kuwaitis are friends and French people are friends of Kuwait. Uh, uh, and uh, during this period, we admire the Emir who has been uh, 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 presented as a world leader for human humanitarian action. And uh, we are very happy uh, that uh, Kuwait and uh, the Emir is uh, congratulated for his uh, noble action. As you know, I am here as the president of the Institute of Arab World, 
and uh, Kuwait was one of the uh, creator of this institute uh, in, in, the, in the past and we wish that Kuwait could be very present in our action, in our activities. And so I met many people here to invite them to come to Paris. Mr. Jack Lan, president of the Arab World Institute Paris, has achieved phenomenal grounds in the arts and cultural arena. His visit to Kuwait therefore has strong cultural connotations and further aims at developing the strong existing cultural dialogue and projects between AWI and the Kuwaiti authorities. Culture, uh, after our common action with the President Mitterrand, culture become one of the, the heart of the society. Uh, and uh, uh, we wanted to, 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 to for, for the young people, for, for all the citizens, um, g g give uh, them the possibility to discover the different uh, uh, artistic and cultural activities. And this period was a very intense period, and I hope it will continue. In, an, in a modern society, it, it can be a source of movement, a source of, uh, of uh, um, uh, civility. Uh, it, it, it could be also an excellent uh, instrument against violence, against uh, ignorance. And if we want to uh, uh, facilitate the progress of the society, culture has a great role to play. Kuwait belongs to the founding members of the Arab World Institute and took part in its inauguration in 1987. The Arab World Institute and Kuwait have maintained strong ties due to countless exhibitions, shared projects, mutual visits and a strong patronage from Kuwait, which is the first sponsor of the Institute. Mr. Jack Lan, President of the Arab World Institute Paris, graced Kuwait with his presence today, addressing a number of important issues. From the Radisson Bleu, I'm Genwa Djiburi reporting to you for the English News. For a chance to see our reports again, please visit our YouTube channel at MOI Create News. And to recap tonight's news, hear the headlines once again. His Highness the Emir receives a cable of congratulations from His Excellency the President of Ukraine. Yemen's Houthi rebels have signed a final part of a peace deal with the government days after taking control of much of the capital Sana'a. Japan's second-highest volcano, Mount Ontaki, erupts, leaving hundreds of people trapped on the mountain and more than 30 feared dead. And thousands gather in Hong Kong after police clash with protests seeking democracy in the city. Thank you for joining us.